What's up YouTube, Crafting Cars here, happy Tuesday, and happy 420 if you're into that sort of thing. In today's video I'm going to be going over all the progress I've made on this B16 block thus far, and since I have quite a bit of footage, I decided I'm going to chop it up and put it into a montage style video with some voiceover along the way just to help clear things up. And this is my first time doing this style video, so let me know what you think. So starting off on the rear main seal plate, I cleaned off the mating surfaces, applied a little Vaseline to the crankshaft as well as the inside of the seal, then added a thin layer of Honda Bond Gray RTV to the mating surface and torqued those 10mm bolts down to 8 foot pounds. And I highly recommend having that rear main seal put into the end plate before you go ahead and bolt it up. I've tried it before where I have the plate bolted up and then try to squeeze the seal in afterwards and it is much more difficult so this is definitely the way to do it. So next I tap in my new pilot bearing into the flywheel, get everything cleaned off, then mount it to the crankshaft using ARP flywheel bolts. I torque these all to 95 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern using the ARP brand assembly loop. You may notice that I got a screwdriver jammed in there. Basically what that does is stick through the flywheel into one of the little crevices on the back of the block there and holds it in place while I torque it down. Now we can move on to installing our clutch and pressure plate. Using our clutch alignment tool to get everything straight, we can mount everything into position and torque our ARP pressure plate bolts to 19 foot-pounds. And lucky for me, I've got my roommate Jonathan here for moral support. And since that's everything we need to get done on the transmission side of the engine, we can now get this block mounted up to my engine stand using the factory transmission bolts. You may notice that the legs of my stand have been modified and painted blue. I extended them out a little bit using one inch bar stock to allow for space for the clutch and pressure plate to clear so now I can spin the crankshaft freely without any interference. So now that I could flip the engine over, it was cool to see the new main studs installed, and it looks like the guys at CSS also plugged my oil squirter holes for me as well. So now we can move on to the timing belt side of the block. Installing the oil pump, water pump, and tensioner is a pretty straightforward process. Once again, I like to use a thin layer of RTV on the mating surfaces, torque all the 10mm bolts down to 8 foot-pounds, and all the 12mm bolts down to 17 foot-pounds. Now when you're installing these parts, I can really only recommend using the OEM Honda gaskets. And some good places to get these OEM parts is, one of my favorites is the Honda Parts Now website. They have very fast shipping, very good prices, and basically when you go to buy your parts they've got engine diagrams and layouts of everything so it's super easy to use. Another good place to find them is your local dealership, but sometimes the dealership has some markup so that's not always the best option. All right, so now we can move on to the rear of the block. First thing I wanna do is install my crankcase breather fittings and plug. You'll notice that on the fittings, I like to wrap them in electrical tape so I don't scratch them. And on the plug, I use a little bit of Honda Bond RTV to help slip it in the hole, and it helps seal the O-rings. Push it in there and tap, 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 and wipe it clean. And now we can 
spin on the oil filter. I think everybody knows how to do this. And while I'm back here, I might as well install my water pipe and coolant outlet. Now I make sure to lube up the O-rings on that water pipe with Vaseline before I lay the pipe down. Then basically just tighten those up snug and you should be good to go. And I almost forgot one last thing while I'm back here. Might as well screw in this little oil tee. I use this for my oil pressure sensor as well as my turbo feed port. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's content. In the next coming video, my next Tuesday upload, I plan on getting my cylinder head all cleaned up, hopefully installing it onto this block. And then if my AEM cam gears come in, uh, I plan on getting those dialed in as well. So you can look forward to that. Also, if you haven't been checking out the Friday uploads, Gideon's putting in mad work on his RX-7. So if you like this engine building kind of stuff, that's right up your alley. I recommend you check out those Friday videos. And yeah, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye!